time for another stock review. This time we're talking FUBU TV. I'm going to show you who's buying on the inside, who's selling on the inside. Insider trading, short positions, latest news, sentiment around the stock. What's going on for this company? I'm going to show it all. I'm going to share it all for you. Would you invest in this? Can you make any money out of the company? Is it the right time to buy? Is it too expensive? We're going to give you a profitability score, a solvency score. We're going to get our heads down and look at the numbers. What do you think? Okay, let's get straight into the review. Without further ado, let's get into it. Would you buy shares in FUBU TV? R right then, smash the like button if you like this content or tap the down like if you don't, I don't mind. I just want the most engaged audience. Click subscribe if you like the content. Let's get straight into it. All these reviews are made completely live, all on my own, everything, because I'm not paid to do it. It's unbiased. It's real. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I'm just here to present the information to you for you to make an informed decision. And in this review, we're going to cover the latest news for FUBU. We're going to cover the uh, the website. We're going to cover the numbers, the balance sheet. We're also going to do a full back test on the stock as well. So would you buy this? So let's get that start nice and simple straight away. And first of all, what is FUBU TV? If you couldn't guess what it is, I will explain it. Here we go. FUBU TV. FUBU TV is a sports first live streaming company. The firm focuses on offering subscribers access to thousands of live sporting events annually, as well as news and entertainment content. Its platform, FUBU TV, allows customers to access content through streaming devices and on uh, smart TVs, mobile phones, tablets, and computers. The company was founded by David Gandler, Albert uh, Suar Suarez, I hope I pronounced that correctly, and Sung Hoi Choi on February uh, 20, 2009, and is headquartered in New York. The listed name is FUBU. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to put a warning out here. I'm just going to say straight off the bat, all right? With all the AI technology we have going on in the world right now, with all of the online streaming and so on and so forth, who needs another platform. How many of you are tired of another platform? It just never ends. I I have Netflix, I have I have BritBox, I have um, BBC streaming services. I've had Sky when I was in the UK, Direct TV, YouTube. I mean the list goes on and on and on. And every time you want something, it's on another service, another app, you've got to download it, all the rest of it. Do we need it? Do we need another streaming service? So Straight away, I look at this and think, okay, okay, if I'm going to invest in a company, it has to be unique, proprietary, do something that nobody else does. Remember, anyone can stream anything. I mean, I'm a TV channel. I'm streaming content. I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, uh, making the movies or I'm not... Uh, you know, making the sporting events. I'm just streaming them. If I'm a streaming service like FUBU or Netflix or anybody else, I mean, some uh, streaming services do make their own content, but primarily you're streaming content that somebody has made for you and streaming it. So anyone can do it technically, uh, you know, theoretically that is. Um, but uh, do we need another one? Are, are we are we sort of completely, you know, um, Fubooed out, if you like, with constant choices. What makes this company unique? Well, I'm going to put a real warning out here because, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, I only think you need one or two services. Unfortunately, there's going to be infinite because they're all competing for the space. So it's very, very difficult to win in this sector. Hence, you can see that the, the chart there opened up here, went up, but went down, and now's, now is a, a penny stock, $1.00. Uh, 72 there and $2.199 right now. Anyway, let's have a look at it. We'll go into the numbers in a few moments. Uh, if you're buying this on margin, it's 100% maintenance. It's regarded as high risk. The average volume is 13.74. The volume today is 6.56. No dividend here, just growth. It's losing money, negative 1.47. What stops YouTube or Apple or Disney just buying you out? They've got more money. They can buy the whole company out. They can do it better. Because if you haven't got the money, you can't pay for the licenses. You can't get anyone to stream on your service. I mean, how do you compete 
with the big money. You're just providing a streaming service. Anyone can do it. All right. Um, now I've, I've actually got Livestreamer Cafe, actually my own streaming service. I don't mean this YouTube or, or, or Rumble channel or X channel. I mean my own actual server. I've actually got it uh, as well. So I actually have, I have, I have that if you want to ask me about that. Anyway, market cap, 585.61 million is the market cap. 52-week high, 387. 52-week low, 96 cents. All right, now then, we're going to cover some news in a minute. What about the uh, earnings of the company? Well, as you can see, uh, it's generally heading in the right direction. We are moving up. We are losing money. We nearly started making money, and then we fa fell away again. With the uh, next earnings is February the twenty seventh, and if it's popular and all my members want it, I could maybe, um, I could maybe, uh, you know, cover the earnings for it. Uh, anyway, TC, we've got uh, a live comment here made during this review. Martin, new to the show, really enjoying the coverage you you, you do is fantastic. Thank you, TC. Welcome uh, very much indeed for being on the show. Thank Thank you. This is made during a live uh, a live event, as are all my uh, reviews. Now, who else is buying the stock? Skills, Palantir, Neo, uh, Chinese manipulation, don't like that. Context, Clover Health, Workhorse. A bit of variation here. I can't actually draw a conclusion on here because I've, we've got some good companies, some Chinese manipulation, and some not. So it's kind of like... 50-50 here. I, I, I don't see a, uh, a, a pattern there to give me an idea of how the stock will trade. And to be fair, it looks pretty um, It looks pretty much in one direction at the moment. Not uh, Well, if we look over the year, we can see the volatility, certainly. But uh, anyway, since, since uh, this company uh, opened up, all we've had is generally downward trend. Anyway, let's look at the website right now. If you're if you uh, are new to my channel, please click subscribe and ring the bell. We are doing a review here on FUBU TV. We're looking at the numbers. Should you get your checkbook out or your credit card, Mr. Jordan Smith? And should you should you buy this stock? Well, before you think, hey, it's cheap, I'm going to buy it. It's the new Netflix. Let's uh, Let's go into the numbers and have a little look. So first of all, <coughs> excuse me. First of all, let's take a closer look at the website. This is FUBU TV. Well, it looks like every other streaming service. All right. You can uh, choose which uh, plans you want uh, and all the rest of it. And you can see uh, different sporting events and whatever. I, you know, it's, it's hard to really... Um, get too excited about another streaming company. I'm, I've got to be honest, uh, I'm not really a fan because anyone can do it. You can be bought out at any moment. What makes you proprietary and unique? Unless you're making your own content that everybody falls in love with, if you're just streaming what already exists, I don't know. It, I, I would never invest. This is, this is not a buy from me. I'll tell you right off the bat. I wouldn't invest in this kind of company. It doesn't make sense from, from an investment point of view. Uh, anyway, let's look at this. We've got some latest news just, just came out. Traditional media companies are teaming up for a new sports-centric streaming service that spells trouble for FUBU TV. Now, I have to say, this comes from the Motley Fool. Motley Fool are influenced, they're paid, they are, you know, heavily influenced on their opinions because they are paid by people to do reviews. I don't get paid. I'll never get paid. I do it for free for my members. So just want to bear that in mind with what they're saying here. In the streaming market, FUBU uh, has carved out a not, a not so lucrative niche for itself. The company focuses on live sports, making its platform a go-to service for cord cutters looking to watch their favorite teams. On Wednesday, uh, which was yesterday, FUBU TV stock tanked following news that the Disney, Fox and Warner Brothers Discovery were teaming up to create a joint venture that will marry the three companies, sports heavy channels, into a new streaming service. While key details like pricing are still unknown, increased competition is profoundly bad news for FUBU TV. Of course it is. Of course it is. Disney, Fox, Warner Brothers come together with all their money buy all the licensing deals, FUBU TV can't get any licensing deals and they go out of business. This is what I'm saying. Now, it's it's true. I have to say that is true. I, I cannot see how you can compete when they're already it already exists, the services already exist, and now you're trying to do it and compete with people with 
infin- infinitely more money than you do. The problem for FUBU, FUBU TV is simple. Its business model just doesn't work. Even without much direct competition, some sports can be found on various streaming services, including Amazon, Prime Video, YouTube, and Disney's ESPN. But there's nothing as comprehensive as FUBU TV's platform. The company has had uh, little trouble attracting subscribers and price hikes haven't been a problem. Given that, there isn't a viable streaming alternative, but for many subscribers. At the end of the third quarter, FUBU TV had 1.48 million paid subscribers in North America, which generated 83.5 million of revenue each month on average through subscription fees and advertising. The company bumped up subscription pricing in January, taking on $5 to each of its plans. Even with a lack of competition, FUBU TV continues to light cash on fire. In the third quarter, the company reported free cash flow of negative $29.5 million. That represented an improvement, but puts the company on pace to burn through about $120 million annually. To put that in perspective, this is a, this is a company that now has a market capitalization below $600 million. Okay, so basically, it's running out of money and it's going to need to dilute, go to the shareholders. Now then, if you are a fan of this company and you would like them to be on the show, please do reach out on social media. Go to their investor relations pages uh, and... um, and uh, send them a message. Get a little bit, uh, little, get, get, get your headset on, get on the phone and uh, get them on my show. I'd love to hear from them so we can crunch the numbers and talk about it. Uh, hashtag LucasAids as well with a capital L and a capital A so we know that you are one of the team and uh, we'd love to have them on the show. Anyway, let's let's go now into some more, some more numbers. All right, we're going to go deep dive now into some more numbers. Okay, so here we go. What we're going to do now is look at the actual intrinsic value, the balance sheet, who's buying on the inside, who's selling on the inside, and all the rest of it. So here we go. Let's go into that straight away. Intrinsic value. This is what a lot of people use as a valuation for the company. Um, We've only got a base case scenario, which says undervalued by 61%. Now, does that mean then you should buy this company? Uh, should you buy it? Well, we'll find out now. Let's go deeper into it. If we scroll down, is there a warning on this company? Is there an intrinsic value warning? Um, uh, There is no, there is no valuation warning. Now that's important um, because it can present a valuation trap. There isn't one. There isn't a valuation trap here. It's saying it's undervalued by 51, sorry, 61%. No warnings, which is a good sign. The intrinsic value, for those of you that don't know, is this. Stock intrinsic value is the real worth of a company's stock based on its financial health and performance. Okay? Very, very important. This is how we come to the valuation and Very often, we can have an overvaluation or an undervaluation warning, and we do not have it. So, is it a good buy? Is it a good deal? Am I being unfair to the company? Well, let's have a look. FUBU TV reported a robust third quarter for 2023. Remember, we're presenting the facts based upon numbers, not a biased impression like the Motley Fool just so you know, all right? Everything here is just the numbers. I'm giving my opinion that I think this sort of company can struggle against big companies, but we're giving you the numbers and we're not leaving you with that. We're going to now go into the numbers and see if that negativity is warranted or maybe it's a great investment. With a 43% surge in total revenue to 313 million and an increase uh, uh, and a 20% increase in North America North American subscribers reaching 1.477 million riding this momentum FUBU TV has raised its full year North American revenue guidance to 1.319 to 1.324 billion forecasting a 34% year over year growth 
The company also improved gross margins by 900 basis points to 6%, reduced net loss by 21 million. So it's not quite the picture that uh, Motley Fool have presented so far, is it? Uh, and boosted and, 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 and boasted, I beg your pardon, a record high ARPO in North America of 83.51, uh, showing progress towards its goal to becoming profitable by 2025. With 266 million in cash reserves and a focus on technology and content uh, aggregation, FUBU TV is strategic, strategically, strategically positioned as a super aggregator in the evolving cable TV and streaming space. Okay, let's look now at the revenue. This is very, very good. This is not the way it sounded on, on um, Motley Fool, uh, as we can see. Up 8% and expected to continue in a very nice uptrend. Operating income, we've invested and now we're spending less and now we're up 8% on the operating income. Net income is moving up. 16%. Hey guys, these numbers are looking good. I wouldn't buy the stock because I can't buy any stock. Well, I can, but I, I aim to be completely impartial and not here to pump and dump stock anyway. However, uh, it's looking more attractive. I wouldn't buy a streaming service just because of the reason I've already given, but um, this does look promising from the financials, the intrinsic value so far, up 20% on the, on the recent cash flow. Uh, capital expenditure uh, up 666%. We're spending some money over the last range. There it was. You can see how much more we've spent recently investing. Operating cash flow up 21%. Let's look at the balance sheet. Now, just because you are a small company doesn't mean to say you are necessarily going to fail. Just because there is, you know, the Disneys and the Amazons out there that can buy you out and all the rest of it doesn't mean to say you are going to fail. It just means you've got a difficult road ahead. But I started with no subscribers and now we're doubling our rate of growth every month and we're inviting CEOs of publicly traded companies onto our show. They love being here and we're growing. People told me I wouldn't get this off the ground and uh, we're now on target. I believe in a few years to be 10 million subscribers, more than Graham, Stepan and Meet Kevin combined. That's the rate of our growth. So let no one say that a small new service can't become the best service. It can. All right. Anyway, 1.2 billion in assets. Uh, we've got 260 uh, million in cash. Now then, 876. So the balance sheet is okay. How much debt do we have though? Long-term debt, 396 million. That's 45% of our liabilities is debt. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. However, with interest rates about to come down, this could be a catalyst to drive the stock forward. Let's hope so. All right, 45% of their liabilities is debt. But they do have, how much debt was it again? Uh, the debt was 396 million, but we do have 260 million of cash. So they could technically nearly, nearly wipe out all their debt, maybe about 70% uh, of it. So the balance sheet isn't too bad. They're not going bust. They're not going to be destroyed just yet by, uh, thank you, David, for your subscription. Uh, operating margin uh, is is negative at the moment. Uh, net margin is negative, 29%. Uh, FCF is negative. So the margins, the efficiency isn't great at the moment. That would make sense. Now then, what about the profitability score? 31%. All good, exceptional uh, three-year, ROE is increasing, ROIC is increasing, and exceptional revenue growth forecast. 31% profitability. Okay, okay, that's okay. It's a new company. We can live with that. Uh, solvency. Now then, 28%. Long-term solvency is looking good. So long-term solvency is looking good. Short-term solvency at the moment doesn't look so nice, but the projections, the, the growth forecasts, where we're going, we're okay. Now, 28% is not what we want to see. It's red. However, they've been spending a lot of money investing in the company. They've got some debt, yes, but I think that this company can turn that around. I think they can turn that around. Now, if things go well, 
they can uh, turn this into the 40s, 50s within a year, perhaps, looking at the numbers they've just projected. However, they are under pressure from the big ones, uh, Disney and, and the like. But what do you think? It's not as bad as I first thought. It's it's not a buy from me just because, you know, I wouldn't buy this type of stock anyway, a streaming service. I don't uh, think it's the way to go. I just wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy Netflix, uh, to be honest with you. Um, anyone can do what they do. That's what scares me. Anyone can be replaced at any point. Um, but the balance sheet isn't as good and the profitability isn't isn't sorry isn't as bad as uh, as was first um, suggested. Anyway, looking now at uh, Wall Street's targets uh, on the lowest range, fifty one percent upside. That's very good. Eighty five percent upside on the on the average, and the best case scenario, one hundred and sixty one percent. All of that is good. Competition. Well, there's the competition. Uh, it, may, it mentioned Snapchat. Snapchat is just a load of rubbish. I wouldn't touch Snapchat in a barge with a barge pole. Don't know why, who, who the heck uses Snapchat anymore. Anyway, that's just rubbish. Um, anyway, I'll give you the links in a minute so you can actually use my software and you can look at the uh, the, the competition yourself. Now then, this is a bit of a concern. Insiders have been selling. November, just a couple of months ago, they were selling, uh, not a huge amount though, to be fair, 66,000, 109,000 was sold by Janadis John uh, back here in November 21 and 22. It's not a huge amount, but uh, we've not had any buying from insiders recently. That's not a you know, sign of confidence, uh, at least. What about short interest? Well, but 17%, 20% is a short squeeze territory. With volume, it could short squeeze. Anything above 20 can short squeeze, but you need a lot of volume. Well, it's got obviously some customers. Maybe they're investors as well. Who knows? That, But there's a lot of short interest on this stock at the moment. Latest news. Unfortunately, we have no latest news. This was six months ago, which means, um, in fact, I will talk about, oh, has it been removed? Uh, this this oh this video is private. We can't play this video. It's been marked as private. It's a private video, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so in a day or so, you'll see my review up here above Bloomberg and CNBC. It'll be right there. Okay, let's have a look down at um, some uh, some sentiment on the stock. Well, over the last ninety days, we can see that the sentiment is uh, is thirty four percent positive over the last thirty days. Well, 53% negative now, 53% negative. Last seven days, 77% negative. Obviously, this news that we've just reported about Disney and so on and so forth is not being well received. And today, 77% uh, as well. A lot of negativity now, sentiment-wise, on the stock. Okay, let's do our final thing now. Let's go, let's go and do a back test on the company and see how it compares to the competition. And we have to do that because otherwise we've got no idea how it all how it makes sense, how the money stacks up. All right. So, are we going to make some money out of this company? Are you going to print money? Is it the time to buy it? Well, we're now going to find out. Smash the like button if you like my content. I make all these videos, edit all these videos live on the fly. This is not done afterwards. This is done during a live show on my own and doing it all live for my members. Okay, let's have a look at the numbers. $10,000 in 2022. I know it's only a short while ago, but that's all we have, I'm afraid. Uh, 2022, $10,000 on the S&P would now have returned you 10.5. You'd have made 500 bucks. FUBU TV, 10,000, that's in red, would have gone all the way down to 1,600. You'd have lost most of your money. Uh, Netflix, 10,000, you you'd be down at 9,000. Okay, so you'd lost money on Netflix as well over that period. Netflix is in yellow, FUBU is in red, and the S&P is in blue, and that is with reinvesting available dividends. So let me give my final thoughts on FUBU TV. Would you buy this? Well, uh, I wouldn't buy a streaming service just because there's too much competition. You never know who's going to win in this market. There really isn't a good ETF for it. So, you know, who would you buy? So it's not, it's not a buy from me, regardless of how well it was doing. Um, is it as bad as the Motley Fool paint out? Paint, no. It does have a decent balance sheet, which I think has the potential to improve. 
Yes, if you think it's if it's undervalued, which intrinsically it is, uh, it might have a good opportunity for growth. It is quite unique from the point of view of the way it does things, but the competition is all over it. What do you think? I don't know. It's not a buy from me. Um, I, I wouldn't buy it, but is it a buy for you? Can I give it a buy rating? I would say um, potentially... If you like streaming services, potentially you could be buying something here that has some uniqueness to it and it has a reasonable balance sheet. It's whether you feel it can survive the competition. That's kind of, you know, does it have a loyal fan base that use their services? I don't know. So it's um, maybe to buy from me. I wouldn't personally buy it. Um, but maybe it could be right for you. Tap the like button if you want. Um, if you want any of the links to, to Alpha Spread, which, which is what I said to you could get, above my head and down below in the description. If you're one of my uh, members, you can get a completely free plan of this service and use it like I do for free. <coughs> However, if you want to research infinite amount of stocks in the depth that I do. There's a premium version. And if you do, you get a 10% discount using my referral. Links above my head and down here, martinlucas.com forward slash links and also below in the description. Um, and you'll get a discount, which will basically make my membership completely for free. So again, I provide the best service to my members. Over here, we have all my reviews. I've reviewed many, many stocks. Meet the CEO series. If you're one of my uh, Lucas aides, Use the hashtag LucasAge, capital L, capital A, uh, and uh, go on social media. Send the emails to the Investor Relations. Ask the company to be on my show. I would love to speak to FUBU TV, and we get CEOs on the show because you, the investors, message them and tell them about the channel. They have a voice here. And I can rank, uh, I can rank number one for Fubu TV quite easily. I would imagine on YouTube and Google, and I can give them a voice to share their story to the world. So there you go. Go ahead and do that if you want to. Over here for the links. That's it for me. Until next time. As always, take care of yourselves and each other.